Bonjour and welcome to our live coaching event for our time. My name is Julie Peasgood and I'm delighted to be your host this evening. I'm an actress, TV presenter and the author of an award-winning book about sex and relationships. I'm Kate Taylor, I'm Our Time's dating coach and I work with singles just like you to help them find love in the fastest and most fun way possible and tonight we're going to be talking all about body confidence especially in the bedroom we are indeed now feel free to ask any questions that you might have during this talk just use the chat box on your screen you can also watch replays of all of our previous sessions mm -hmm. by searching our time video coaching we've covered I would say we've covered almost all of the questions Honestly. that you might have about dating, but if there's something that you don't find covered in tonight's talk, just have a look at those videos and I'm sure you'll find it there. Talking of questions, you've sent in loads mm -hmm. for tonight and we will do our best to answer as many as we can. Now, as Kate said, the first thing we're going to discuss tonight is body confidence and how to get it. Before Kate shares her advice, we want to know how you currently feel about your bodies. Are you body confident? Let's, let us know by answering our first survey question, which is, do you feel confident about your body? It's a simple yes or no answer. Do you feel confident about your body? So, body confidence. <laughs> Getting back into dating can give you a crisis of body confidence. It really can, because you probably imagine that everyone else is in perfect shape. They all look like movie stars. They all spent the past 30 years doing 100 sit-ups every day. And sometimes you can't really feel date ready. Mm -hmm. I really want you to relax, because remember, finding love is about finding one person so if you're not feeling confident about yourself at the moment just remember that statistically your chances of finding one person who really likes the look of you are excellent and we're not here tonight to rebuild you we're just here to remind you that you are lovable and gorgeous just as you are here here okay. and if you don't feel confident it's not that you've got a body problem it's that you might have a body image problem so here are some ways that you can feel better right so I do these, even though it, I like how I look, but sometimes the confidence thing, that can be a bit erratic. So these are the things that I do when I need to feel confident. So, and I'd really like us to do all of these together. So please don't make me do these by myself. Like, I do them with you. Awesome. Yeah. So these are things that I found really work. So I'd really like us to do it all together now, okay? okay. So the first thing I want us to try is a power pose. Mm -hmm. So a really easy one to do is just put your hands on your hips right now, Stick your chest out, ladies and gentlemen, and put your hands on your hips and really open up that body language so your body language becomes expansive. Okay. Now, I'm not just doing this to get you to stick your chest out, although on a date that wouldn't be the worst thing that you can do. <laughs> What, I'm, what I want you to do with this is to use your body language to tell your brain that you feel confident because what happens is our brain kind of takes its, uh, takes its sense, a sense of how we're feeling from our body language. It's like body language first and then feelings afterwards. So when you're nervous, you know how you hunch up and you go like this. As soon as your brain realises that your body's doing this, your brain's suddenly on alert going, oh my God, we're in danger, we're unhappy, like things are all going wrong. And it puts you into that kind of panicky mode, which you don't want to be on during a date. But as soon as you go all like languid and expansive, then your brain's like, oh, we got this, everything's cool. And it makes you feel better. And then your brain, is, it puts you in that confident thing. Do this before a date, it's amazing. So if you're doing that thing where you're meeting at a restaurant or meeting at a bar, if you go there a couple of minutes beforehand, just go <clears> in the loo, do a power pose, stand like that. Apparently two minutes is the perfect length of time to do it. And then just, you know, see yourself rocking out of the loo like, hello. <laughs> Honestly, I promise you it works. Isn't that called the Superman pose? It is. It is the Superman pose. Superman he does that as well, but that might look really strange. Yeah. A friend of mine also told me she was an actress, or well, she is an actress, and she said that she learned that if you, she was taught before you enter onto the stage or even before a big meeting or an audition, if you just raise yourself onto tiptoes, just the balls really? of your feet. Yeah. You don't have to hold it for ages, but just raise yourself up and then lower gently down. That simple movement can really give you a feeling of status and of confidence. You know, so nice. 
Superman pose, raise yourself on the balls of your feet. Right. Yeah, and if you've lied go. about your height in your online dating profile and probably raising yourself on tip top of, in tiptoes isn't the worst thing that you could do. The next thing I want you to do is, is make a gratitude list of everything you like about your body. Now, gratitude has been proven again and again to make you feel more confident, make you feel more upbeat and optimistic. But if you're having a crisis of body confidence, you're probably not really feeling grateful for the body that you're in at the moment. Instead, I would bet I would bet good money that every time you look in the mirror, you're not seeing the lovely bits, like I, I really like my hair color or my eyes or whatever. You're not seeing those. You're focusing right on hips, thighs, anything that you're not confident with. So. Tonight, we're gonna to stop doing that because that is not working for you. Instead, I want you to make a list, just do it mentally in your head now, of three things that you're grateful for about your appearance or three things that you really like about your appearance. And every time you look in the mirror for the next few days, I want you to look only at those things and acknowledge those things and everything else, just forget about them. Just seriously, they don't exist anymore. Start reminding yourself every day that there are at least three things that are really nice about you. And if you can think of more than three, then start adding to that list. Make I think sure that's good. such a good tip, you know. Mm-hmm. We should be grateful. I mean, even if you only like your feet or or whatever, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. I, I'm not particularly the over fond of my body. I'm carrying too much weight, but my husband tells me I've got nice soft skin, so I feel yeah. really good about that. Oh my, that's like satin. No, no she's exaggerating. That makes mine feel like a brillo. No, no, no. like, Ow. What are you proud of? <laughs> Uh, I've got really long eyelashes. I have such eyelash envy. When I look at you, they are really long. They haven't helped me in dating. I don't think a man has ever looked at me across the room. Her, her with the eyelashes. I must have her. How do you know? How do you know? But yeah, I don't know that. So when I look in the mirror from now on, I can look at my eyelashes. You can look at your lovely, glorious, glowy, soft skin, and we can feel better. It's better than looking at tummies and thighs, right? Yeah, here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, Uh, and then... And I want you to do this now, even if you feel a bit daft doing it, please try it because it really works. I want you to step in to the more confident, perfect version of yourself. Okay, so what I mean by that is close your eyes now and picture the most perfect version of yourself, the most confident version. You know, the one that sometimes you feel that you're not living up to, Picture that person, okay? See what they're wearing, see how they're standing. I bet they've got a bit of the Superman going on. What are they, you know, what are they wearing? How are they carrying themselves? If they were to say hello to someone, how would they say it? They wouldn't be hunched, they'd be like, yo. That kind of thing. Visualize the lovely person, the ideal version of yourself, and then mentally in your mind, step in to that person. Like, step inside them. So suddenly, they are you. You are no longer you're more like, yeah. Do that every day and it really helps you to start adapting to being that person now. Like you won't be quite so uh, apologetic, you'll be more like just relaxed and casual. And also you'll probably start dressing that way, start talking that way. It really, really helps. I know you're gonna feel daft, but trust me, okay? It's good. No, I didn't feel daft. When I when I close my eyes and visualise like a perfect me, I'm wearing white t-shirt tucked in, white plimsolls and faded jeans because I never tuck anything in, ever. I always wear great big baggy clothes, hide the tummy and things. So that picture is a great one to keep because I feel confident even just looking at her, at me. But if it's just like a tummy thing, you're like one pair of really tight pants away from being the perfect person. I've never looked at you and thought, so you got a tummy. Do you know what I mean? You're carrying that. Because I disguise it. But, you know, hey, anyway, less of which later. Crop tops. But... (laughs) <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, now we're going to move on to looking and feeling, looking and feeling as good as you can. Okay, online dating is a visual medium, so it's wise to ensure that you're presenting yourself in the best way possible. This is not about being perfect. It's not about looking like a film star. It's not about looking amazing. It's just about presenting yourself in the best way possible. If you think that this is all a bit shallow, I would ask you to remember how you are when you're scrolling through an online dating website because you're not giving people the benefit of the doubt and thinking maybe they're better than that photo. You're just not. You're really not. You're judging people by how they look. So 
you, I'm not to say that you'll be judged by it, but just it really matters to present yourself. Give mm -hmm. yourself the best chance, look as good as you can. And these are some tricks that we know that work really well when for your photos and stuff when you're doing online dating. Yeah. Okay, we've done a whole video, by the yep. way, on photos that work well online. So it really is worth taking a look oh. at that after this talk. Um, but basically, your photos are what's going to sell you online. They completely are. So to look, as Judy says, we've got a whole video on this and you always ask questions about that. So please have a look. But generally, these are really good things that you can start using straight away. The first easy way to look good and to get attention when you're doing online dating in your photos is to use colour. Online dating photos, as you know, when you're using the site and you're kind of scrolling through all the different options, online dating photos have to stop someone in their tracks and be attention grabbing. Mm. The easiest way that you can do that is by using colour. So ideally in your photos, you wouldn't be like dressed all funereal chic like we are tonight. You could wear a really brightly coloured top. If you've ever had your colours done, this would be a perfect time to start wearing those colours. Um, you can wear lovely colours or you can have a brightly coloured background like this this kind of thing would be would be really good don't do anything too cluttered because we all go like yeah. super spy <laughs> investigate and just start reading the names of the books on your bookcase so don't go cluttered just go colourful and like if you had a photo of you standing outside in a lovely springtime garden all the colours going oh, on yeah. that would be really good and also if you were trying to attract somebody who like gardening say you like gardening and they might think wow that's yeah. a gorgeous mm -hmm. lovely pretty exactly. set of flowers exactly <laughs> also that would be really good for um, seasonal pictures so yeah. if you've got a really lovely photo of you on your online dating profile but it's got a Christmas tree in the background that isn't going to show you in the best light because we know that that photo is at least five months old and because of the frame of mind that you can go in you can start being a bit skeptical when you're doing online dating people maybe think that you you've been on the site for five months and nothing's <laughs> happened we don't want that we want photos that look like they're really up to date um, another thing I really want you to do is to use really good lighting in mm. your photos. So don't use flash photography because we know that flash photography adds seven years to your face. Seven years? And I don't know about you, I haven't got seven minutes that I want extra on this face. So instead of using flash photography, start using outdoor lighting. Like photographers love the lighting at three o'clock in the afternoon outside. <laughs> the light is diffused, it's flattering, you look radiant. How lovely, yeah. three o'clock. Three o'clock. That's the, the magic afternoon. time. Okay. Yeah, three o'clock. Yeah. Um, yeah, set your watches. So this weekend, a brilliant thing that you could do would be to get outside to get your colourful top on, get outside to your lovely sunshiny springtime garden, and at three o'clock in the afternoon, <laughs> take some photos selfies are fine by the way selfies are absolutely fine but lovely photos of you three o'clock in the afternoon do it can i add something yes if you feel like smiling great i love photos where somebody's smiling rather than looking really kind of dour or nervous yeah. or down yeah, you yeah. want to look happy. Like, be the person that's going to show up on the date. And the chances are you're not going to walk in the date like, uh, or like looking at uh, You're going to be like, hi. So like, be that person so people can, get, can picture going on a date with you because that's what's happening in someone's mind. They're picturing meeting you in real life. So you want that to be like positive and lovely. What about smiling fixed or opening your mouth? Oh, right. So when you're smiling, have a selection of uh, smiling, showing your teeth and not showing your teeth because... I, I don't know if it's just me, but I really don't think it is. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was going through someone's profile to, you know, to help them do their profile, and all their photos had them smiling with their mouth, mm -mm, so they're kind of, mm -mm, mm -mm. and I was thinking, what's wrong with your teeth? Like, why aren't you showing your teeth? And because there are so many people to date online, if I had been single and looking at him, I just would have thought, I, I don't think you got very good teeth, and I might have moved on to the next person. And yet the teeth might have been fine. Teeth were fine. Right. I met him. The teeth were lovely. It was okay. like, show the teeth. Okay, great. Right. right, video dating. Mm. The second time that your image really matters is when you're video chatting. Yep. Okay, again, we have covered this mm -hmm. fully in a previous event, so that that's definitely worth a watch. Right, if you haven't done video dating yet, I really, really, really want you to try it because it's absolutely brilliant. It gives you all the benefits of going on the date, but, but still being in the comfort of your own house. You're going to be less nervous on a video date than you will actually walking into somewhere, and it's the closest thing you can do to see what someone's like 
as, as meeting them in person. So I definitely want you, you to video date. When you're doing video dating, the most important thing I think that you can do is to find a flattering angle for your camera. So when you're, when you're, doing, on, when you're doing a video date, you're probably gonna do it on your phone or your tablet, maybe on your laptop. But what I don't want you to do is to do this. Like, oh, oh yeah, no. it's Jowl oh, City. It's so nice to meet you. Yeah. Because it's just like a it's bad angle. Even, like the tightest jawline in the world cannot cannot hold up to this angle. <laughs> you know that thing when sometimes you you find yourself you've accidentally switched the camera on on your phone and oh, you see it's yourself. It's horrible. Absolutely hideous. <laughs> Please don't do that on your date. So what I want you to do is to prop it up at eye level. So I want you to look look into it like this because everything will look lovely. You'll just look great. Or so even slightly. At up better than down. I think people see through the stuff. Oh, up. jolly good straight you know line. I mean? yeah. It's a bit like, mm, yeah. it looks a bit practice, but just eye level is absolutely great. So I think ideally you would prop your phone or your laptop up on some books or have it on the windowsill so you can get that nice, ideally three o'clock in the afternoon light coming through onto your face. That'd be really good. But remember like this, not like this. And I, I probably wouldn't do this. <laughs> you just look short. <laughs> okay. okay, get the point. Okay, try also to show yourself from the waist up. Show huh? yourself from the waist up. Don't aim to be the world's sexiest head. <laughs> this is true when you're doing video dating, but also when you're choosing photos for your profile. Ideally, you would show yourself a, probably about, I don't know how much you can see of us now, but probably about the same as this, up to your waist. Not only would that show off your body, because your date is going to be, just like you would, your date is going to be scrutinising you to see to see your body, to see your figure and everything. And, and it's, you know, let them see it. That's, you know, it's, it's a good thing. But it also, so not just about that, to show off like what your figure, but also to show your confidence. So you can start using your body language to show that you're relaxed, that you're confident, you're expansive. I'm not saying you've got to do the Superman <laughs> thing, but you know, you can kind of, you could sit, you could sit more like that. Like you would, Probably like if you're doing a Zoom call at work or like a job interview or something, you would sort of sit professionally but welcoming and relaxed. Do that, waist up, okay? Not just a talking head. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, then when you do turn up on your date, your first date, first date. your appearance is gonna matter big time. Your, your appearance will matter. But so what I would really like you to do when you're on your first date is don't be scared to dress up. Now, I hear a lot from singles that they go along to that first date in a deliberately casual outfit because they don't want to scare someone off. Or if they're, when you're not feeling confident, I think it's a bit scary to necessarily, sometimes you dress down when you're not feeling confident. Yeah. You kind of, you don't want to look as if you've made an effort because you're kind of, in your mind, you're picturing what someone's going to say, like, oh, who do you think you are? No, forget all of that. The best thing that you can do on a date is to dress up in something that's slightly smart that you feel really good in. And this isn't just me being all fussy and making you like have a whole glamorous transformation. There's research to show that when we dress smartly, it changes how we think. So it encourages the part of our brain that responds, it encourages our creativity and makes us see big picture thinking. So on a date that would translate, creativity would translate into much better first date conversation. And having that big picture thinking probably means you're less likely to judge people on things that don't really matter and see the person as a whole. And also it's just an excuse for you to wear your nicest clothes. Yeah. So men, I mean, wear your shiniest shoes, wear your smartest jacket, wear a shirt that you feel really good in. Women, don't be scared to wear a dress, seriously. Turn up on that first date looking as lovely as you can and then everything will work out. Your confidence will come from that and people will respond to you differently because you look, you look good. Yeah. And if you have made an effort, <coughs> it gives an opportunity for the other person to say, you look nice, which mm -hmm. they mean, and then that's, that's good from the beginning, yeah. isn't it? It starts off on the right note. Exactly. Yeah, great. Okay, it's question time now, and we are kicking off with Sue. Sue is 66, and she says, where do I start? I am really nervous about starting again, and especially putting a picture of myself out there. Mm. Right, Sue, I think everyone who's listening to this tonight will, will echo your sentiments. You are not alone in feeling like this. But just the fact that you've written this question and you're watching us now, that's such a positive first step that you've taken. And it's going to be little baby steps like that that make your confidence grow all the time. 
What I want you to know and remember is that our time is a secure website. So your photos, the, the site can't be searched by Google. Your photos aren't going to come up on like Google image results. It's very secure and it's only going to be shown to the members, to the paid up members of our time. But also don't forget, it's only going to be shown to people who've said that they want to meet someone just like you, who's your kind of height, living in your kind of area with your sorts of interests. You have such a willing and receptive audience who have literally paid money to see you and to talk to someone just like you. So please bear that in mind. So it's not like you're putting yourself out there. It's more like you're letting people find you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you get really stuck, you can always call on a dating coach like Kate yeah. to help you through it. That's Definitely. Literally the kind of thing I do would just to help you go through the thing. I realise it's scary, but it, but it will work and you'll feel really good. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. next question is from John. John's 55 and he says, how do I make my profile as appealing as possible? I know I'm an okay guy with a lot to offer, but it's hard to know how to convey this in profile without appearing overconfident or arrogant? I think British modesty makes it hard for us to sell ourselves online. But also you don't want to go the other way and, and, and be arrogant about it. So I think it helps to think of it like a job interview. So instead of in a job interview, you wouldn't say anything like, I'm scraping by and seriously, I can't believe they haven't fired me. <laughs> but also you probably wouldn't say the only, real, the only reason this company exists is because of my brilliance. What you would do in a job interview is mm. use examples. So that is what you can do in your profile. So I want you to show, not tell. So it stops you having to write things like, I'm, I'm incredibly successful. So obviously don't write that, but instead like let that be shown through examples like of a lovely holiday that you've been on or you know, something like that. Instead of saying that you're really generous, demonstrate that you're, you're generous by mentioning charity work that you do. Instead of saying that you've got lots of friends, show that by saying about the parties that you host regularly. It's that kind of thing, showing examples like that is a lovely way of letting people draw their own conclusions without you having to like ram it down their neck. Yeah. And also don't forget you can use your photos to do a lot of these things for you. So if you have like a really interesting hobby or something like that, if during the day you're like a mild mannered accountant, but in the evening you play in a band, then make sure that one of your photos shows you playing in your band. So you can again, showcase the kind of person that you are without having to write it all down. Spot on, great. And now Marie, 63, Marie says, how can I change my boyfriend who's a player? Marie, right, you can't change him. So the real question here is why are you with him? Yeah. Why, why haven't you just dumped him, Marie? Um, and what happens when I know that someone is dating someone who's like a player, basically, you're, you're dating someone because it's a short-term relationship. You might not realize that, but when you're dating someone who isn't gonna to commit to you, it, the relationship has already got its end date built in. So you're kind of safe in the knowledge that it's gonna end. The reason you would want to be safe in that knowledge is that maybe you have got a problem with commitment yourself, or the thought of making yourself really vulnerable in a relationship with someone who's kind and loving and nice because if they finished with you, that would be devastating. Whereas by staying with a player, you're kind of safe because you know he's gonna leave anyway and it's not your fault, it's, it's him. I would really love you to start thinking about your own attitude towards commitment, okay? You don't have to go all deep with this, but there's a really good book that you can read. It's called He's Scared, <coughs> She's Scared and it's by Stephen Carter and Julia Sokol. It's amazing. I thought I had no fear of commitment until I started reading it and then I've I started reading it because I was with a man years and years ago, 100 years ago, that I thought was a real commitment <coughs> phobe, so I thought I'm going to read this book and understand him. He was a kind of player. Um, but instead, reading it within the first three pages, it was kind of like, oh, oh, hang on, maybe I have that kind of thing. So that's something that I've worked through with a therapist, and so now I have a, a better attitude towards that. But, so please start by reading the book and exploring your own feelings about commitment, because you might find they're very different. Mm. 
Excellent. Okay, we've got the results now of our first survey in which we asked, do you feel confident about your body? This is, these are surprising, on, Kate. Is it good, is it good? Well, yeah, it's a bit like the Brexit vote, okay? 49% of you said you do feel confident about your body nice. and 51% said you didn't. It's so close. I thought most people were going to say, no, I don't. I think that's really good. I think it's absolutely It's really brilliant. good, yeah. We do know that, that daters over 50 generally have more confidence than daters under 50. So I think this is a, like a really good sign for that. So yay, you lot. And the other ones who aren't feeling confident, please try the things that we mentioned there. Because honestly, just a little bit of this, you can start feeling really good, I promise. <laughs> Oh, that's okay. the wrong gesture, really, isn't it? Yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Forget that. Wipe that. That was meant to be Superman. It just came out wrong. Yeah, don't do that. Okay. It's not going to happen. It's not, it's not good. Hands on hips. <laughs> so, to boost your body confidence, use power poses and visualization to improve your body image. Spend time using the right photos to feel better about your online dating profile. And dress up for dates. Only wear casual clothes if you're looking for a casual relationship. And now for chapter two.